All right, it's the only undefeated team inside the Big Ten Western Division. Nebraska's in the driver's seat, but uh, Minnesota and also Wisconsin with their hands on the steering wheel as well, trying to take it away from the Huskers. We've got a huge one in Madison uh, coming up on Saturday with uh, Nebraska taking on the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, we would expect this one to be one of the marquee games in the Big Ten going forward each and every year with these two programs in the same division. So, you know, when we talk Nebraska football, got to bring in Brian Toll of Corn Nation to talk it all up. Uh, Brian, let's start with this Freedom Trophy business. Uh, there aren't enough trophy games in the Big Ten. There, there needs to be more trophy games in the Big Ten. So, I, so I'm guessing just to, I don't know what it does. We, we know when there are good teams and good matchups. We don't have to be told that by, by uh, establishing some kind of trophy, but I don't know what your thoughts are on the Freedom Trophy. Who had it yesterday? Dan Wetzel of Yahoo said, it's good to see that we're fighting for so many trophies instead of, you know, national championships, you know. Um, here's my thing about it. The, th the theory is okay. The whole Freedom Trophy thing, you know, going to meet on Veterans Day on and around, so so be it. Um, freedom, heroes, legends, leaders, you know, are we kind of, you know, there's this whole thing with that. Um, but what, I'll, what I would also say is, it's like Nebraska and Wisconsin are trying to force a rivalry in the Big in the Big Ten. Um, Nebraska fans, ever since they've joined the Big Ten, they've been begging for a rival. We want a rival. We want a rival. We want you to be our rival. We want you to be our rival. Um, and, and they don't get how it just doesn't work like that. You know how it just you know it becomes a rivalry. It just you know you can't just oh we're in your neighborhood now. You're the guy I'm going to beat up all the time. You know it's it's not like that. It's really not. So. I think from a, from an outsider standpoint, it's real easy because Alvarez going to Nebraska and then being at the AD at Wisconsin. Um, I get that. Uh, I get that Nebraska's AD dash on I course was mentored by Alvarez at Wisconsin, um, and probably the one guy that would be the highest pick to take over for Barry once he retires from Madison. Um, it, it feels forced. I mean. The trophy's nice. The theory's nice. Don't get me wrong. It, it still feels forced. Um, to me personally, I'd rather Nebraska be Nebraska win the game to have the Big Ten West title. Um, you know more than you know a trophy that you know, the whole grand scheme of things you'll remember, but you don't remember. I mean, I say this about Nebraska, Missouri. Nebraska, Missouri played for the uh, this Big Bell, and for a long time, Missouri didn't even know they had it until they won. You know, all of a sudden, then it became. You know, once they started winning, it became important to them. Same thing with Nebraska. This trophy is nice. It'll become important once they start winning it. But at the same time, worry about winning first. You know, they're one and two against Wisconsin. Both losses, which they got trained, and uh, the only win they got, Nebraska had a chance to uh, give up the game except for a money ball fumble in the fourth quarter with uh, a couple minutes to go. So again, let, let's worry about winning first before we worry about what trophies we get, because I'd rather have a Big Ten Championship trophy and a Rose Bowl trophy than, you know, a, a gimmick trophy, you know, because I'm not saying it's a gimmick, but what I am saying it's, it, it's that uh, let's let's have a trophy that's not forced upon anybody before we worry about, you know, let's worry about the bigger trophies, the, the need-to-win trophies first. Yeah, the really cool trophies are the ones that are uh, founded uh, a zillion years ago based on some kind of strange story or, or something something real that happened involving some kind of animal <laughs> maybe maybe some kind of odd story and then it kind of kind of just uh, started off and, and then they became a uh, they, they um, formed it into a uh, some type of trophy game but uh, there's so many in the Big Ten right now and the old oak and bucket comes to mind Purdue Indiana when are they going to play for a championship it's been since 2000 for Purdue playing for a Big Ten championship Indiana next to never, like 1967, so maybe give give those programs, hey, they, they can hold on to that, but Nebraska, Wisconsin, they want to win Big Ten championships, that seemed to be enough um, uh, incentive right there. All right, you, you bring up that 2012 game, the Big Ten championship game that year after the win against Wisconsin, and that seems to be a lingering thing um, that needs to get fleshed out of the system for a number of people. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, Bo Pelini. Uh, Pelini after the the um, after the regular season win, the first comment was, uh, "Gosh, I hadn't forgot. I guys, I haven't forgotten how to defense against the run." And then 
in the Big Ten Championship. Train, train, jet sweep, touchdown, train, pick six, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. So um, this is kind of a – Bo kind of mentioned it yesterday in his presser. He, he seemed, it sounds like he wants to – you know, there's like a little bit of a revenge factor, which if that's the case, then never, actually Nebraska plays really well. But – this is just as much as a mental game for Nebraska as it is for a physical game. And because Nebraska in games like this under Bo Pliny just crap the bed. They do. Um, big games on the road that they need um, the win to keep conference title hopes alive, national championship hopes alive, uh, this year playoff hopes alive. Um, they've not done very well at you know. I mean, they've, if it's at home, it's a completely different story. There's a they got a puncher's chance. On the road, you know, it's not if Nebraska fails. It seems always how do they fail? How do they, you know, last time Nebraska was in a situation like this where they controlled their own destiny was 2012, and that's when uh, Wisconsin hung it on them in Indianapolis. You know, and, and the game wasn't even that close. It was 35 if I remember right, like 35 38 7 at halftime, and the 7 was because of a Taylor Martinez heroic run that nobody ever remembers anymore because of what Wisconsin did to Nebraska. You know, you know they're always a running joke. Oh, they just scored again. Oh, another jet sweep. You know, and, and that's the way it is. Um, you still get, there's a couple guys on this defense that still remember that, that played in that game uh, this year. Um, is Nebraska's defense better? Probably. I'll say that. Um, the one thing that you note about Wisconsin is even though they have a different head coach, uh, nothing really changed in their offensive system. They went kind of spread type, you know, the beginning of the year with uh, the McAvoy kid, now with Stavi in their more uh, typical West Coast, typical pro style. Um, it, Gordon's just like uh, Monty Ball in that, in that aspect. What I will say, though, is the offense – Depend. It depends on number eight in the offense. Um, a lot of people, you know, a couple of people were saying that he didn't participate at all practice last week. Bo Pelini was asked about it yesterday in his presser, and he kind of dodged the bullet to make the point of, hey, we have other good running backs. So if, if you're looking at Amir Abdullah versus Melvin Gordon, well, Amir might be 80%. So it's going to fall on guys like Tommy Armstrong. It's going to fall on guys like Imani Cross. Falls on guys like Terrell Newby, who looked, you know, everybody says, hey, they looked okay against uh, against uh, Rutgers and Purdue. Well, guess what? That was Purdue. This is this is Wisconsin. That was, you know, a team that's not going to make a bowl game. This is a team fighting. This is a team fighting for a Big Ten championship. And you know, effectively, if Nebraska loses this game, they're down two games. You know, they're, they've lost two games with. You know, the tie, losing the tiebreaker to the conference, um, they have to host Minnesota, who's playing pretty well right now, and then they have to go to Iowa on Black Friday, and Iowa is kind of an enigma itself. Um, on the road, Iowa's terrible, but we get them in Kinnick this year, and they seem to be pretty good. Plus, Bo's always had an issue with Greg Davis uh, going back to Texas. So, really, you know, this is – this is kind of a this, this is your Waterloo for Huskers this year, you know. If, if there's going to be another big game, they got to win this game. If there's they don't win this game and it, they looks bad, um, granted they'll be an eight and two team and they'll be out of the college football playoff race and probably out of the Big Ten race and they're looking at a bowl game and in, in uh, San Diego and it's going to feel like one of the biggest letdowns ever. I mean, there's a lot going on in this game. It, it, it's it, it's almost it's almost scary how much how much this game means to the season. Yeah, definitely, and uh, I, I think that's a good thing for the Big Ten. Uh, let's let's jump back on the field in just a second with the personnel and the matchups. Before we get to that, you bring up uh, the division championship, getting to a Big Ten championship game uh, again, and uh, do you do you perceive a lack of respect for this Nebraska team nationally? Uh, Ohio State was ranked a spot behind by the College Football Playoff Committee. They get the marquee win at Michigan State. Now people are talking about Ohio State uh, making a playoff run. Uh, they'll, they'll probably need some help elsewhere. Of course, Nebraska would have helped had Michigan State won. Then it could have set up a rematch in the Big Ten Championship game. Then you have the opportunity 
to avenge a loss. But as it stands right now, you lose on the road by five points to a top 12 team, and uh, you have the chance to beat an Ohio State team in the Big Ten Championship game. I know the players and the coaches need to take care of business on the field because, like you just pointed out, three tough games upcoming. But for for us uh, fans and analysts that can uh, conjecture and speculate about the future, uh, I just hear nothing about Nebraska being in this college football playoff scenario. Well, it's kind of like what I told you about, you know, just earlier with, you know, being on the road. I mean, it's year seven of Bo Pelini, and he's not won a game that's really mean a whole, meant a whole lot in the whole national picture yet. Um, local guys, some local guys taking the task for it, and they're called the meanest people in the world. Uh, other local guys, you know, will tell you, hey, he needs he needs more time. I mean, Tom Osborne didn't do anything for 20 years and such and such and such. Um, but they're the first ones to tell you that, um, oh, he, there's only so many guys that, him and Nick Saban are the only ones that, uh, won nine games a year for seven years or something. Well, the argument is there. Nick Saban's won a few SEC titles, won a few national championships. Bo Pliny has won a Holiday Bowl and a Gator Bowl. And that's about it. And Bo Pliny needs to win something for everybody to get off. That's, because nobody trusts, nobody trusts Nebraska because nobody trusts Bo Pliny. Okay, it, it's one thing, you know, he had Taylor Martinez, he had Rex Burkett. Nobody still trusts uh, Bo Pliny. You know, he came real close, this, you know, second year. He gets Texas the Big 12 Championship. But then after that, what has he really done? He made a Big, he made a big 10 Championship and hasn't didn't do anything with it. He was out, out of the game by halftime. Um, nobody trusts Bo Pliny, and to be quite honest, they don't have a reason to yet. And that that upsets Nebraska fans, it, but it's the honestly got truth. It's it's when he finally wins something, the national media will finally say, "Hey, you know, Nebraska has a chance." Nebraska has a puncher's chance, yeah, definitely. But guess what? Let's say they meet Ohio State in the Big Ten championship. JT Parrott is the type of quarterback that has destroyed Bo Pelini in the past years. Braxton Miller, Russell Wilson can throw pretty good, but then also can run. And you don't have to go back any further to when. Braxton Miller um, played pretty well against Nebraska a few years back before he got hurt, and then Nebraska had the big comeback. And then the next year, they just got whooped in Columbus. You know, I mean, there's no reason to really think, you know, Bo Pliny has a lot of demons to cross before he can win a Big Ten championship, and there's a lot of them in front. Hard road game, big game against a running quarterback, a, a uh, offense that's spread running quarterback, you know, there's a lot of odds for him. That's why the national media is not really picking anybody, which I get to. I get more than anybody. The fan base doesn't, but I get it because guess what? Until he does something, we do not They're always going to say it, and, and it, it's not fair. It, is it fair? It's fair. It's not fun, but it's fair. Okay, Brian, back to the matchups. Amir Abdullah, we have to kind of speculate. Uh, it's not the NFL. We don't get uh... – uh, projections in regards to playing status for, for, for game day. So you're talking like 80%. Is that just kind of a guess? Is that what you're hearing? Uh, I don't think there's any question or much question that he's going to play. I, I don't think there's a question he's going to play. We were told it was a grade one MCL sprain um, or something around there, something what Rex Burkett had a couple years ago. Um, the comeback on this is anywhere between three days and three weeks. Uh, p different people come back differently from it, and what Amir's going to go, and, and that's the one thing you worry about is, you know, he he cuts a lot. He just, he's not a north south guy. He will cut. He will make people miss. He can go north south just as well as anybody else, but he's got to make that first cut. Um, if he cannot go as much as Nebraska wants him to go, then the offense goes through a lot more people, which is could be a good thing. But um, the first guy I think of is Tommy Armstrong. You know, he's he's got to pass better than 50%. He's got to throw more than 180 yards. He's got to get more than, you know, he's got to have no throws that, um, you know, three or four throws that just make you scream and go, why? You know, um, Nebraska has to hold on to the football. They're, you know, Nebraska's only had – Nebraska has one game in the last three years two, year, – two games in the last three years that they haven't turned over the ball on offense. And it's mind-boggling when you think about it, but it needs to happen. So I hope that the, I hope that the staff Tim back the offensive coordinator. I hope that he's playing for Noah Mir 
Um, I'd rather be able to put Amir in than play him for Amir and not have him uh, because what we saw against Purdue, they did pretty well against Purdue, but it never seemed like it clicked very well. Um, most grumpiest 35 points put up, 42 points put up. Um, nobody was really happy about it, which I don't get high, but um, definitely uh, it, most of the offense. I did something here. Amir has two. Amir has 199 touches on the year. Um, pass run between newbie Cross, Bell, and Jordan Westerkamp. They have like 184 combined. Hmm. So the offense goes through. The offense goes through Amir. If it doesn't, it goes through Tommy. The offense goes through Amir more than it does anybody else. So then. It's got you know, Amir's got to be there for Nebraska to have a really good chance on offense because this is a defense that ain't a joke. It's one. Of, it's a top five defense in scoring defense and top five defense in rushing defense. Um, this offensive line hasn't played great. Um, you know, it's 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 it's. I'm not saying it has to be Amir, but it, it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier for the Huskers to win. Yeah, you bring up this Wisconsin defense. Uh... Alludes to the stats here. Number one in total defense, 251 yards per game. Number three in scoring defense, just 14 points per game. Now, let's let's be realistic about the opponents. They haven't played the better offenses in the Big Ten. No Michigan State, no Ohio State, no Nebraska yet. So I would expect those stats to inflate a little bit uh, after Saturday's game. Uh, they got a kid in Derek Landish who, uh, who played in the backup role before replacing Chris Borland. He's got 12 tackles for loss and six sacks. Vince Beagle, 12 tackles for loss, six and a half sacks. Michael Caputo uh, leads the team in tackles with 64, four and a half tackles for loss. I've seen this team play a number of times. They shut down LSU, which which runs the football, until Wisconsin lost its two tackles in the fourth quarter of that game and Melvin Gordon, but defensively lost the two tackles. They were shutting down that LSU ground game that has trounced just about everybody else. So, uh your, your thoughts about the Wisconsin defense against uh, Nebraska's offense? It's going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. See, the one thing I wonder about Nebraska, um, Seathan Carter, the tight end that you know we get told about, is there on scholarship? You know, it's like a it's like a ghost sighting. Every once in a while, we see something flying across the field. We never really throw in the ball. Uh, we get told Seth Carter is healthy after being out two weeks plus the bye week, so three weeks. Um, Nebraska needs to be able to throw the ball, uh, and it's not just really just – it's not even really like deep stuff down the, down the field. Um, quick stuff, the screens. Nebraska's been actually really good with ladder screens and X screens off the, off the uh, wide receivers to uh, Bell and Western Camp and such like that. If Nebraska can get that going side to side and get this defense going a little bit away from each other, Maybe that run game opens up a little bit, you know, and uh, especially if Amir's not there because Monty Cross is going to be the guy that wants to just, you know, bulldoze everybody. And this defense, you can't bulldoze everybody. You kind of got to make some holes and run and split them. So the LSU game, I kind of saw in injuries did hurt. Yeah, um, the one thing LSU does has is a, LSU has the bigger line than Nebraska does across the board. Uh, Nebraska's a little more, a little more athletic, a little more spreadish type of thing. I think styles of offense do kind of matter in this. Um, Tim won't go like LSU did and go heavy a lot when they need to. Um, you know they're gonna they're gonna keep they're gonna keep uh, two to three wide at all time. Try to win the numbers battle in the box. I would think uh, that's the way Beck's always done it. Um, doesn't mean he's got success. I don't know. It's gonna have to depend. It's gonna really depend on guys like Alex Lewis, uh, Chango Condolo, uh, Mike Moody, um, Jake Cotton, Mark Pelini. Mark Pelini has to play the game of his life. Mark Pelini. Nebraska. One thing you want to watch in this game is Nebraska's center to quarterback exchange. When Mark Pelini's in the game, who is the nephew of Bo Pelini, head coach, if I remember right, uh, Nebraska plays two two centers: Zach Stirrup and Mark Pelini. Zach Stirrup. Last, and I saw this. I'm sorry if I'm not getting approval right, but Zach Sturps like scoring rate when he's in in the game. They score like one every one time, like two every two drives, two drives every three drives they score. When Mark Pliny's in, 
it goes way down. It's like one to every four, one to every five. Consequently, when Mark Pliny's in, him and Armstrong have had such a horrible, and I mean straight up horrible. Nebraska's mostly shotgun. They'll go under center once every good while. Um, Pliny will either send the ball, sends the ball not on time. He'll send knuckle balls. For some reason, Armstrong can't catch the Pliny. It's 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 kind of a weird thing to watch, and it's kind of one of those enigmas like, you know. The staff swears up and down. It doesn't happen during practice. Well, it always happens during games. Um, you know, besides that, Pliny's, Pliny's not really the greatest blocker in the world. Um, Jake Cotton has not played very good games ever since the uh, Michigan State game where he fell down like a tree in front of national te television and kind of embarrassed himself in front of everybody. Um, hasn't had the greatest game since then. Lewis has been okay. He's not been bad. Uh, he gets Purdue, the offensive line, I wouldn't say they played well. I would say they managed the game well. They didn't have any really big penalties. They had one false start, I think, and that was kind of an iffy one. Um, it, it, the offensive line for Nebraska really is going to have to help out no matter what, who's back there. Tommy's back there, Riker, Fife, Amir, Newby, doesn't matter. Um, and Nebraska can't win the, win, the, win the battle up front, and they've had issues the last few games. If they can't win that, then it doesn't matter. Does not matter. I will say Nebraska's the one thing that Nebraska has hoped for this time is uh, special teams wise. They hope that you know blocking two blocking two kicks against Purdue and the Warnie personnel returning kicks is going to have them have them a lot more hope. So maybe field position is going to be a big deal for the Huskers here in this one if they could flip that. And it would definitely it would definitely help out their cause. But on the, and on the road, it's going to be real fun. It's going to be fun to watch. I mean. The only way it's not going to be fun to watch is it's going to be another 2012 Big Ten championship. I don't think it's going to be like that, but I don't know who wins. No, I think it's going to be fun to watch. I, I don't think uh, – I just don't see anything other than that, unless turnovers come into play and maybe a special teams play that uh, breaks something open early. Uh, one last thought here, Brian, because I'd like to get your thoughts on uh, Nebraska's defense against uh, Wisconsin's passing game, and I have always uh, argued that Wisconsin uh, fails to jump into that top – five very, very elite place in college football. They've typically been a top 15 program the last 10 or 15 years or so. Uh, but but the lack of a big play quarterback and dynamic wide receivers, Jared Aperderis, very good. Other than him, they've had nothing, no support in the passing game on the outside. Stavi and uh, McElvoy, uh, Tanner McElvoy, the type of quarterback uh, head coach Gary Anderson likes. Anderson, of course, replaces Bielema, does little to change ex uh, at least what we see on the surface offensively and defensively for Wisconsin. Gary Anderson is pretty much stuck to, to what was established by Alvarez and then transferred to Bilema, uh, Bilema at the time. But Tanner McElboy brings the, the added dimension of the running game. He's running for almost 10 yards a carry, 442 yards, four touchdowns. Stabby, the West Coast guy, guy that stays in the pocket. He's turned the ball over in the past. Better, better passer. McAvoy gives them little in the passing game, although the percentage is better. He's thrown more picks uh, than than Stave. So who's who's the better matchup for the Huskers? If if you went by style, it'd be Stave. Um, Nebraska tends to love pocket passers because what they'll do is they'll run, they'll rush four, maybe five, and then play their pattern matching zone. Uh, McAvoy would be the I the wor worst matchup because then. What happens is Nebraska has to go to a straight nickel all the time, and um, would probably when Nebraska is not really great when they spread it out um, three wide, four wide. But if you get them in a base size set or something like that, Nebraska seems to want to play a lot better because they do two things: one, they can cheat down the safeties a lot faster. Uh, that's something you'll notice with Nathan Jerry, especially on a basic guy formation to help stop Gordon. They'll chase Jerry down. And uh, keep the cover high one, um, but also Nebraska's linebackers still are not playing very well. And when it comes to something like a uh, like a zone read fake or such like that, or a rollout fake, like sending the tight end on on the uh, opposite side of the uh, formation, Nebraska's linebackers are still having issues with this. And it, I don't know if it's coaching, don't know if it's personnel, don't know if it's the way the moves are aligned, but you know, Josh Banderas, uh, Zaire Anderson, they, they play well, but there's always a few plays every quarter that you're just like, why? You know, David Santos hasn't been, you know, he's been better, but he hasn't been great. 
Um, I think that's the one thing that Nebraska, if Nebraska can get, if Nebraska gets left and right with linebackers, and all of a sudden there's open guys for Wisconsin, then it's going to be a very long afternoon for Nebraska because, like I said, linebacker wise they don't play very well, and if you, you can exploit one thing, you you can start to exploit a lot of other things. We've seen it. Uh, we saw it last year. We saw it this year against uh, against Michigan. We saw it against Michigan State. We saw it against McNeese State for all for heaven's sakes. So, you know, the one the one worry for me uh, is McAvoy. I think Stave, in theory, would be easier for the Nebraska defense, but at the same time, you know, worried about getting guys out of the backfield. Gordon has become a really good pass catcher. He had a nice touchdown against. Uh, Purdue last week out of the backfield on a wheel route. Um, that's something like a Banderas or a, a Santos has to cover, and that worries me because those guys are not as fast as Melvin. Um, tight ends are a big deal against Nebraska. seems like Nebraska has an issue with tight ends. Uh, linebacker coming down, and, you know, you always keep the one – like I said, you always keep the one single high safety, which means the other safety is going something. Either he's got a running back or such, and it kind of that kind of worries me if the – if Stave gets a hot hand, he wants to go down the field a little bit. That's going to worry me a little more. Uh, McAvoy's passing doesn't worry me. It's more running. But overall, I would be more aware of McAvoy. The one thing I would say about Wisconsin's offense, though, is when they had McAvoy in there exclusively and Stave wasn't playing, it seemed a little more forced. They seemed a little more. They seemed a little more comfortable now with Stave in there. Uh, basic pro set, basic guy sets, and such like that. Um, Especially that LSU game, especially when they took Gordon out, that offense looked really forced. Uh, Northwestern, Stavi was in there, if I believe, and it. How did that game happen? So oh, you know, um, Stavi, the way the offense goes, it, it's kind of a mixed question. McAvoy worries me, but the style when they play Stavi worries me a lot more. Yep. So. Definitely. Ryan Toll of uh, Corn Nation breaking down Nebraska, Wisconsin, of course, the huge one in the Big Ten West. And uh, it's going to be three weeks of Big Ten uh, Western Division games that will help decide this championship with uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Nebraska going at it. Hey, Brian, we know you'll have your picks on the uh, website here coming up in a few days. I believe the entire staff gets together, right? Yep. We all get together and uh, try to make it sound like we know what we're doing when we don't. Hey, you, you fool us all. Throw darts and call it good. <laughs> Definitely. All right, Brian, we appreciate the time. You got to work.